I swear I didn't do anything wrong. I don't belong here. <laughs> Mr. Catwell, apparently you failed to grasp the situation. What we have here is a, 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 a failure to communicate. Yeah, uh, you're gonna you're gonna rock, boy. You're gonna be in here a long, long, long time. No, no, get me out of here. Please, I didn't do anything. I don't belong here. It's a mistake. I mean, it's a You love Mozart. Oh, I do. Not before I get my carbo fixed. How can you even think about food when here we are on the verge of millionairedom, baby? It's easy, darling. I do it with the same gusto that you did your pre-dawn rendition of the little engine that could. I do love that bedtime story. Yes, well, while you were chugging, I think I can, I think I can. And he pulled happy but tired into the station. I was thinking of this great, thick, big... Jelly Donut. Cruel, but I forgive you. Why are you so magnanimous? Honey, have you forgotten about my meeting with C.C. Capwell at 1 o'clock? This is what we've been lusting after, the pearl and the oyster, the, the icing on the cake. Donut. You're right. I can't wait to have him sitting there just on his knees, begging, whining. Can, can... Hold on, hold on. What, have we here? A letter from Ed McMahon? I now believe it somehow, somewhere, there is a God. What do you mean? What Honey, we have died and gone to heaven. This afternoon I have a meeting with C.C. Capwell, and here the poor little rich girl, Pamela Capwell Conrad, wants to make herself a deal. Is that the door? <laughs> Well, Hi. what new disaster has kept you two up burning the midnight oil? Don't tell me the ghost of Hal Clark has been out walking the battlements at night. Mason, let me give them the news. I'd hardly call it news. Do you remember I talked about having a lead, a potential witness? That McElhaney guy? Yeah, well, we, we found him and we met with him last night. Well, who is M McElhaney? What does he have to do with this? Well, according to what we've been able to piece together, he's probably the last person who saw Hal Clark alive. Well, that's what we thought at first, but then I talked to him, got some more information, and it might be useful to us. Drum roll, please. We questioned McElhaney about what happened that night, and apparently he wasn't the only witness. There was someone else in the boathouse the night that Hal Clark disappeared. Come on, Keith. She must be putting you on. I mean, look at what it says. I know what it says. Read it again. Read it out loud. I, I want to bask at every word. Dear Mr. Timmons, I can no longer withhold the evidence you seek with regard to the disappearance of Hal Clark. Please contact me as soon as possible to arrange a meeting for our mutual benefit. Sincerely, Pamela Conrad. Mutual benefit? I love the English language. Yeah, but what does she really mean? Oh, honey, I think it's obvious. Evidently, she finds out that CeCe wants to make a deal and she wants to beat him at his own game. I don't like it, Keith. <sighs> honey, you should love it. Come on. I mean, what have we got here? 
Gadzooks, we have a, a embarrassment of riches, a cornucopia of crooked criminals. We have a smorgasbord of skullduggery and smarm. We have Keith, the sun Keith, and the moon Keith, and the morning. I get your drift. But don't you think it's a wild coincidence that both Cece and Pamela contact you a couple of hours away from each other? Great minds think alike. Well, I think they've got something cooking. And it smells like rat stew. A pungent metaphor, darling. I know they're up to something, but they want to save their own sweet necks. I mean, they'll do anything to see the other one twist slowly in the wind. As long as it's not you that takes the drop. Oh, well, your concern touches. But I have nothing to fear from Lord and Lady Macbeth because I have, as they say, the bag of bones, and they will risk anything to save themselves. I still think it's a trap. I know, I know it is. But, um... I'm not the one who's going to get caught. <gasps> well, Cruz, this is going to be important. If this uh, Mackle guy or whatever is willing to come forward, we could have something. No, he's probably just another publicity monger out for his five minutes of fame. No, I don't think so. We contacted him, not the other way around. I think he was very sincere. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. What did the guy actually say? All right, on the night that Hal Clark disappeared, Mackle Haney was driving down Old Beach Road and got into a minor accident. He apparently graduated from the Mr. Magoo School of Driving. Should look great on the stand, don't you think? Hey, Julia, would you go ahead? All right, so they, they exchanged licenses and insurance policies and all that, and Mackle Haney noticed that, that there was somebody else in the car. There was a little boy. With his son, maybe? No, Clark was single. He didn't have any kids. Well, he, he was sure that he heard Clark call this little boy Boomer. And, and he noticed that because he, the kid bumped his head and Clark was comforting him. And you think if we can get a line on who this kid was... Exactly. Wh what you're saying is that you're going to trace this guy down and you're going to question him to see if he remembers anything about that night? I know that it's a long shot. Yeah, more like a dead end. It was 25 years ago. Mason, please stop it. What do you think? I don't know, but I think that Scott Clark is as good a place as any to start. He was Hal's nephew, and he might be able to tell us who this boomer is and where we could get in touch with him. All right, do you think he's still on call at the hospital? I think we should check it out, see if he is. Well, I think I'll sit this leg of the search out, if you don't mind. Actually, I think I'm going to stay here, too. You call me if you hear anything. Got something going on between you two or something? <laughs> I'll see you. Talk to you. Be careful. Thanks. Let's just let the do-gooders do their good. I think they're fools if they think this is going to lead anywhere. I'd rather be a fool than a cynic. You know, Mason, you're just as lost as the rest of us, so I wish you'd just cut out the tired indifference because I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. But you know there's more to this Hal Clark business than you're letting on. I can't imagine you getting this worked up over a murder case that's 25 years old. How deeply is Dad involved? I don't know. But I think he's deep enough that it's going to take a miracle to get him out again. Oh, you look better to me than anything I've seen in weeks. Oh. Let me sleep. Are you Scott Clark? No. Uh, you had an appointment at 8 o'clock, Dr. Clark. That was 30 minutes ago. Well, tell him you couldn't find me. What? It was just some jerk resident who had some harebrained idea about hypnosis. Just tell, tell, him, tell him that I'm not coming. Why don't you tell me yourself? You, uh, you know, Dr. Clark, they had told me that you were difficult, but they neglected to mention rude and ignorant. Who are you? I'm the, uh, jerk resident with the harebrained idea. And, you know, I can't wait to hear why you think we shouldn't try everything possible, including hypnosis, to stop your patient's pain. I've been expecting your call. Oh, so I understand. I, I, I understand you have a, a little bone to pick with me, 
so to speak. Yes, well, as they like to say in the movies, I, I would really prefer not to discuss it over the telephone. Would it be possible for us to meet? Oh, uh, quite possible. I, I have I have a one o'clock, but um, you could drop by around noon, or I could uh, swing by the Capwell Manse. Well, I'm I'm no longer at the Capwell Manse, so could you meet me at my place? No problem. I'll 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 be there. I'm looking forward to seeing you at twelve. Well. Woman is aching to make a deal. You can practically hear drooling on the phone. What about Cece? Well, I'll see him at one o'clock, darling. Well, what then? Well, I'll, 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 I'll weigh their stories impartially and fairly and um, come to a fair and impartial decision. Judgments to be awarded on the basis of, well, the highest bidder, I think. Wish I could be there to watch. So do I. It's going to be like taking candy from a baby. So you've talked to Dad again about this, huh? More than once. And? And he denies any knowledge or involvement with what happened the night Hal Clark disappeared. But now you're not sure you believe him, huh? I don't believe he committed a crime. I do believe he's hiding something. I wish I were so quick to share your faith. You just never stopped thinking he was guilty, have you? Guilt is a relative term, Eden. And God knows our father is capable of many things. Mason, we're talking about a murder. He is not capable of murder. So what's your theory? That he's protecting somebody. The logical choice is Pamela. I don't think I like your logic, Eden. Besides, all the evidence so far, or lack of it, is circumstantial. It's enough for Keith to pull out his bloodhounds and go after Daddy and Pamela if we don't do something to stop it. What do you suggest? I suggest you try talking to Pamela. Damn I... it! Eden, I resent the ease with which you dismiss the likelihood of our father's culpability, turn right around and assume that my mother is capable of murder. Mason, I'm not assuming anything. I'm saying she might be involved, and if so, she might be scared and in a lot of trouble. And if you just try talking to her... I, I tried. Then try again. We are running out of time. And Pamela may be the only person who knows what happened to Hal Clark that night. I don't give a damn what it takes. I want that deal finished by the end of business today. Yes, you call me back when we've got a deal. Good morning, Mr. Capwell. Good morning, Grace. I'm sorry to get you up so early. No problem. I stopped by the office on my way. There are one or two things that need your immediate attention. The yeah. Barclay merger. Well, it's going to have to wait. I got some business, personal business. I have to get in order first. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Capwell? Yes, I'm fine. Why? You look a little tired, and we haven't seen you down at the office for the past few days. People talk. Well, that's too bad. People are going to have to talk. We got a bear of a day ahead of us, and I can't get through this without you. So are you ready to go ahead? Well, of course, Mr. Capwell. Good. Then would you start by please canceling all my appointments for the next couple of days? Oh, well, Mr. Capwell. Grace, please do as I say. I want a completely clean calendar. Thank you. what I need. Tell me, Doctor, how is it that you know so much about me, huh? Rude, uh, e egotistical, am, am I quoting correctly? Uh, no. <clears throat> no, actually, I said ignorant, not egotistical. Oh, oh, that sounds accurate. When you didn't show up for our appointment, I asked around. Great. So, who do I thank for turning you loose on me? That was my idea. I'm Heather Donnelly. Sorry, I guess I lost my head. Where do you come from? Harvard Med School. I also got a concurrent degree in psychology, and I spent three months of my residency at a children's hospital in Los Angeles. They've been involved in a pilot program there for several years using hypnosis with kids in chemo. That's great. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing here? Actually, I'm here because of a case of yours, Joshua Morgan. He was referred to us because wait a minute. of the high... Wait, wait a minute. Josh is my patient. He's not some kind of experiment. He happens to be a very sick little boy. Uh, yeah, I'm very well aware of that. Are you? 
Good. Because what you might not be aware of is that when Josh first came here, he couldn't talk. Not to anybody. Now, it's taken me weeks to get that little guy to open up. He's been poked and probed so many times, and he's been hurt for so long. He didn't trust anybody. Well, he finally trusts me now, and I'm not going to let him down. I think I can help him. Really? And what do you base that on exactly, huh? Some hocus-pocus experimental program that's going to save the world? What do you do exactly? I mean, what do you wave around a magic wand? Do you uh, speak a few secret words? Is that it? Well, I'm sorry. You're wasting your time. Josh is not going to be your guinea pig. Can I ask you something, Doctor? What? How many days have you been on call? What does that have to do with anything? That's what I thought. Of course, you know, there is always the possibility that this really is your uh, personality. But, you know, there's nothing worse than an overworked, exhausted resident who uh, doesn't know what he's talking about. Where do you get off making judgments about me? I've lived with this case. I've read every piece of research. I've stayed up nights with that kid. You haven't even talked to him. Wrong. I talked to him this morning. And he happens to think that you're the greatest thing since Superman. And, uh, I can see the feelings mutual. Look, doctor, I'm convinced I can help him. You have some cure for cancer that we don't know about? No, but with hypnosis, I can help ease some of the discomfort of the chemotherapy. I can also teach Josh to use the hypnosis on his own so he isn't dependent for anyone else for relief. Now, what's so terrible about any of that? Well, for starters, it happens to be a lie. Uh, now, I'm not going to sick my patient. Oh, um, excuse me. Uh, Scott, we didn't mean to interrupt you. We need to talk to you. If you've got a second, we'll wait outside. And no, you can, uh... please, it's okay. Uh, look, doctor, I had my first session with Joshua this morning, and it went so well that we scheduled the second one for 11 o'clock. If you choose to grace us with your presence, be on time. Excuse me. Well, you look exhausted. Thanks. What's up? Uh, we're not sure, but Julia thinks that we may have stumbled onto a lead in your uncle's case. I'm sorry, I'm on call. Guys. Clark! No, no, push ringers. Yeah, I'm on my way. I gotta take this first. You guys wait if you want. Got it. We don't want you looking shabby when you go to Pamela Conrad's, now do we? Honey, from now on, it's straight off the pages of GQ. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. From Bargain Basement to Rodeo Drive. What a country! Guess we're gonna have to cancel those credit cards at the thrift shop. Honey, from now on, from this afternoon on, I don't want you to worry about anything as mundane as money. Nice work if you can get it. <sighs> Say what you will, and I know you will. I must have done something right to deserve this. No way. Maybe it's karma from another lifetime. Did you learn that at the ashram? No, I tell you, you know, I always knew I was destined for greatness. I don't think blackmail qualifies in the Guinness Book of Records. No, I tell you, that's wrong. I'm going to call up Guinness as soon as I'm rich. No, as soon as we're rich, we're going to have much more important things to do, Keith. Like making sure that Cece never gets his hands on Brandon again. I can't wait to get out from under that threat. Honey, you bet your bazookas. We could buy a house. Or better yet, we could build one. Honey. Before you call the architects and the carpenters, I want you to, how shall I put this, think of every little thing your heart desires. Really? Yeah. And then what? Sit on it. What? Honey, before we spend our ill-gotten wealth, let's get our ill-gotten wealth. And that means no more mink coats, no yachts, no nothing. Okay. Whatever you say. I didn't know you were such a superstitious man. I mean it, darling. I begin to worry when I see dollar signs where your pupils used to be. I, we've worked too hard to lose this now. All right. All right, look, you better get going. We don't want to keep Miss Pamela waiting. What do I? Do I look all right? Like a zillion bucks. Good luck.
Yes, is this Sunshine Coast Realty? Yeah, I'm interested in buying a house. No, make that a mansion. Why don't you just let me talk to someone in your estate division? Castillo now, isn't it? Uh, hello, Grace. I haven't had a chance to congratulate you on your marriage. Oh, thank you very much. Have you happened to see my father? I guess we're both looking for him. He sent me out to deliver some contracts. I see. Well, um, have you talked to him? Do you know where he is? No, I wish I could help you. To tell you the truth, your father's been a bit unpredictable lately. I'm a little concerned. Well, what do you mean? Well, he asked me to clear his entire calendar. He hasn't been down to the office. He's put everything on hold. And there are a few things that just can't wait. A gentleman flew in from Paris for a meeting with him today, and uh, he refuses to see him. That doesn't really sound like my father. Did he say why? Did he give you a reason? No, nothing. Just that he had some personal business to take care of. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Well, I guess I couldn't expect a better reception than that. May I come in? Yeah. Nice place. Thanks. Can I get you some? No, no I don't want anything. I came over to apologize to you for cutting you off last night. You don't have to. Yes, I do have to. We have not been communicating lately, and it's my fault. I don't know what's going on with the family. I don't even know how to explain it to you. It... I don't have any answers. All I know is that you needed me last night, and I wasn't there for you. I just, there was something I could not get out of. All right, why do you have to keep such a mystery? Why can't you just talk to me about this, Dad? It's not that simple, my boy. Oh, boy, I don't believe this. You never changed, Dad. Why can't... You know, this is fine. I got my own place. I, I don't have to get in the middle of this crossfire anymore. If you're referring to Pamela and myself, she's gone. I asked her to leave. Does that mean that there's a chance that maybe you and Mom can get back together? It means that Pamela and I were a mistake. That's so as far as your mother's concerned, I, I think she's happy in the life that she's made for herself. I don't think she'll want to come back after all that's happened. Why do you have to keep making the same mistake, Dad? Why don't you just talk to me? Dad, She'll... Dad, listen to me. I didn't come to talk about your mother and me. I came to see you, to be with you. I apologize to you. I want your forgiveness. Is it too late to start us over again? No, it's, it's not too late. I love you very much. I want you to always remember that, no matter what might happen. Okay? You guys are gonna have to talk on the run. I've got a consultation in five minutes. That's all we need. We were hoping that you might be able to tell us anything you remember about a little boy named Boomer. What? Well, this, this guy that Julia talked to last night said that your Uncle Hal was with a kid named Boomer the night he was last seen. Boomer is a, a nickname that my Uncle Hal made up for me when I was a kid. Then you were, then you were with Hal that night? Not that I can remember, no. Did, did he call anybody else uh, by that nickname? Was it a handle of his or something like that? No, just me. And you have no recollection of uh, riding in the car with him that night or anything about an accident? I don't have any recollection because I wasn't there. 
Scott, the man in the, that was involved in the accident with your uncle, he remembers you. He said that you were frightened, that it was raining, it was dark. You know, you know I realize it was a long time ago, but if you just think about this for a second, you might come up with something, maybe something about uh, with the storm or where you were going that look, night. Look, look, I told you I don't remember, and it, it's not like something I would forget. My Uncle Hal and I were closer than me and my father. Whoever told you this must have made a mistake. But he knew your nickname. I said he made a mistake. I gotta go. Excuse me. Well, I guess Mason was right. This is a dead issue. Well, I don't think so. Do you think that he's lying? It didn't seem like it, did it? So what do we do now, boss? Why don't you go back to your office and keep an eye on Mr. Timmons, where he goes, who he talks to? How would you like me to do that specifically? I'm sorry I should have mentioned this, but just between you and me, Pearl and I uncovered some remains, human bones underneath the boathouse. Now, we don't know for sure, but it occurs to me that it might have been Hal Clark's. What does Timmons have to do with this? Well, lo and behold, those very same bones have since turned up missing. And uh, I believe our ever-dependable district attorney stole them. Well, how many master bedrooms has it got? Oh, no, that simply won't do. My husband likes a lot of variety. Maybe I could take a look at that lighthouse you mentioned. Um, uh, look, we'll, we'll talk about it when I get there. Thank you so much. Don't you believe in knocking? You never get to hear anything interesting that way. What, are you going into the retail business, Gina? So this is what the best, almost-dressed woman is wearing this year? To what do I owe this honor, Mason? Is it business or pleasure? Actually, I was out and about looking for our illustrious DA. I don't know what mad impulse made me think that he might actually be here working. Well, he is working on the Hal Clark case. He hardly has time for anything else. Well, that is interesting, isn't it? I've been doing a little work in that area myself. I was hoping maybe Keith and I could compare notes. You're welcome to wait. In the reception area. There's coffee. Actually, you might be able to answer a question or two for me, Gina. Oh, I don't think so. Keith never brings his work home with him. No pillow talk, huh? Well, not of that sort. <laughs> but he did mention he's getting very close to bringing down an indictment. Oh, by the way. I want to give my condolences to C.C. I hear his perfect marriage is on the rocks, and he hasn't been able to make a go of it with your mother, either. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? I thought it'd be all over town by now. It seems Pamela moved out of your father's house last night. Well, Mr. Timmons, I do appreciate your coming over on such short notice. Hey, it's my job to serve the public, uh, but uh, it's not very often that I'm called upon by such a distinguished member of the community. Now, what do you got for me? <laughs> you don't waste any time with formality. Ah, oh, heck, why play games? You got something I want, I got something you want. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. Let's start with what I want. <laughs> Be my guest. Well, first, I would like total and complete immunity uh, for the information I'm about to give you. Go on. That's legally and otherwise. Go on. Well, then... 60% of anything you might extort from C.C. Capwell. 60% of what? <laughs> Come now, Mr. Timmons. We're both adults, grown up. What I have on C.C. Capwell will blow him right out of the water. Now, don't you tell me that you don't want to be right there at the first smell of blood. We, I, are we talking about blackmail here? You know, because I should tell you this, I'm, I, I'm planning on prosecuting this case to the full extent of the law. Well, you know, any child knows that the road to hell is paved with... If we're going to play this game, Mr. Timmons, we wouldn't have to play it my way or not at all. You could sign this or I will take my ball and go home. What is it? Well, that's, uh, that's just a, a, a note. That it, it, it's for my compensation for my cooperation. Uh-huh. Sign it. Well, how can I be sure that you have anything that's worth anything? Oh, what I have is worth something, Mr. Timmons. I know who killed Hal Clark. How? I was there. I saw it. Do we have a deal? 
Who did it? Well, if you will sign this, I will tell you how C.C. Capwell murdered Hal Clark. In cold blood. It's me. Same to you, Kane. Anything up? Okay, I'll be in in a little while. I got a, I got a meeting with somebody here first. In fact, he's here right now. Yeah, you bet. Bye. Hey, Ben. I appreciate you uh, stopping by. Yeah. You said you had some news about my brother's case? Yeah, a little something. Have a seat. We, uh, we found a witness who says he saw Hal in the company of a little boy the night he disappeared. I'm just wondering if you have any idea who that might be. Not a clue. Why? What, do you think it could have been Scott? I doubt that. Not that particular night, anyway. Well, you said they spent a lot of time together, so... Yeah, I said that. They were close. They were very close. Scott spent more time at the beach with his uncle than he did at home with me. That's right, yeah. Really? Yeah, but I didn't think it was a good idea because my brother and I had, we had different opinions on how to raise my kid. I mean, uh, he spoiled him every opportunity he got. Yeah, well, that seems natural, uh, seeing as he was a man who didn't have children of his own. Yeah, I can understand that, but it wasn't a good idea because he was my kid, and if I said black to him, he'd run to his uncle and he'd say white. I remember one time he let him drive his automobile. I mean, damn near killed the both of them. It wasn't right, that's all. Yeah, I know, but I can see why the kid would like an uncle like that. I'm gonna go fishing here for a minute, man. Is there anything about the night your brother disappeared that sticks out in your memory? Anything he might have said to you? Maybe something about Scott? No, the thing I remember is that that storm that night was horrendous. And that, that's why I know Scott wouldn't have left the house, because he was terrified about thunder and lightning. Look, I know he smacked his butt many a time for sneaking out of the house and going down the beach to meet Hal, but uh, he wouldn't have gone out that night. Not that night, no. You're sure about it? Yes, I'm sure. What is the... What are these questions about my son, my brother? What... Well, I think it might have some bearing on the investigation. Well, never mind about that. You want to solve my brother's murder, you question Pamela Conrad and C.C. Capwell. Whatever happened to my brother that night, they know about it. So ask them. And then call me. Really, I would love to stay and chat, but I do have an appointment to get to. Oh, well, I overheard. Are you looking to buy a house? No, actually, I'm just helping a friend. Ah, uh, well, I won't keep you. I'll just wait here for Keith, then. Well, I don't think he's going to be back much before two. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just um, call my office and let him know where I am. I'll catch up with him later. Is it all right if I use the phone? Uh, sure. Be my guest. Just close the door when you leave. Sure. Always good to see you, Mason. Grace said he left early, and I'm starting to get a little concerned about him. Oh, hold on. Kelly, he just walked in. I'll talk to you later. Oh, what's the matter? Daughter's checking up on the old man. I'm worried about you. Where have you been? Well, I don't know. I'll go out more often if it means I get this kind of reception. Are you all right? I'm fine, darling. I'm fine. I just got a very important thing coming up, very important business meeting. That's all, and I gotta get some things done. I'm way behind. Well, Grace said you cleared your calendar for the day. Yeah, but this thing is very important. I've got to take care of it. And I think maybe you uh, better go run right along, huh? Well, I thought maybe we could talk for a few minutes. Grace said Pamela moved out. Grace talks too much. Is it true? Yes, it's true, darling. Can we talk about it some other time? Yeah, but I thought that maybe you Darling, please. I really am very busy. We can talk about it later. You sure you're all right? 
I'm fine. They think CC just left him lying there. In a pool of blood. It's quite a story. You know what astonishes me is that you could remember these details so vividly after so many years. Oh. One does not forget something like that, Mr. Timmons. No, I guess not. So, uh, so. Fade out, fade in, 25 years from then, and you're telling me this story. Why? I suppose I'm like an average person who's just interested in seeing justice served. I don't know, but 25 years is such an awful long time to keep something like this on your conscience. You know, I, I don't think your motive is justice. Could your motive be revenge? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, no, well, who's playing games? Because, you know, everybody in town knows that you swept in here with your sights on getting C.C. Campbell back as a husband, and, um, gee, I mean... Accusing murder is an awful odd way of showing your affection for... Perhaps you're a woman scorned. <sighs> Could you spare me your amateur psychology? What I'm offering you is your dream come true. A full confession of murder. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered, and all, all the glory and publicity for you. Not to mention certain monetary compensations. Now, I have drafted a letter detailing everything I, I've just told you. And if you will sign this, <laughs> my little proviso, I will sign this for you, and then we're on our way. Let me see. Now, I give you total immunity, and, and you get 60% of whatever arrangement I do with your ex. I mean, yeah, come on. This is a little steep, don't you think? So it gives you 40%. 40% of C.C. Capwell's vested interest. I mean, real estate, stock, and bonds, and... It, it's not chicken feet. Or we can look at it another way. Without me, you have nothing. With me, you stand to gain a fortune. Yeah. It's up to you. I, it's just your word against his. With that, I can't even get an indictment. Oh. <laughs> you will get your indictment. I've got Exhibit A. Hal Clark's skull with the bullet in. Twice in one day, how lucky can you get? You got a minute? Do I have a choice? Look, I just want to ask you a couple questions and you can kick me out of here, I promise. Look, man, if this is more about what we talked about earlier, then I already told you it's a complete blank. Well, you must have been someplace that night, right? Well, come on, Cruz. We're talking about 25 years ago. Can you place yourself under those circumstances? Well, uh, probably not, but... Apparently, the circumstances that night were fairly extraordinary, though. The storm that hit was the biggest thing ever around here. Yeah, so you keep telling me. Your daddy says that you used to sneak out of the house periodically and meet your Uncle Hal down at his place at the beach. Now, maybe that's where you went that night, huh? No, it's not likely. There was a big storm that night. Look, I... I remember other nights, sure, just like they were yesterday, but... not that night. I'm sorry, buddy. It's just not there. Well, you know, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Why would I be lying to you about this? Oh, I'm, I'm not saying you're, you're lying, Scott. For, forgive me if uh, I'm implying that. It's just that I, I believe it's buried somewhere in your subconscious, some idea of what happened to your Uncle Hal that night. I mean, there was a kid in the car. He was your age, and his nickname was Boomer. Then why can't I remember? Who knows? Maybe you saw something you didn't want to see. Maybe you saw something terrible happen. And if that were the case, I mean, uh, who would blame you if you just blocked the whole thing out of your mind? Ten years of my life I don't have to worry about. <laughs> what are you doing at this? A little sleuthing at Eden's behest, of course. Uh-huh. And what did you find? Oh, lots. A pack of stale chewing gum and uh, what appear to be 
marital aids. Ooh, I'd wash my hands if I were you. Yeah, I already did. How about you and the elusive boomer? Any luck there? No, at the risk of you saying I told you so. Never. Huh. Well, turns out the boomer and Scott are one and the same, except he doesn't remember anything that happened with Hal Clark, and Cruz is going to ask him some more questions, but I don't think it'll do any good. I think it's time you and I stop playing Nick and Nora Charles. And let Keith bring this one home on his own. Forget it. Besides, there's too much at stake. Your parents are involved. Sometimes I think there's a good case to be made for being an orphan. Anyway, these two are up to something, and I want to know what it is. Hmm. You know, Cruz says they found some bones down at the boathouse. Maybe they belong to Hal Clark. And Keith has them, and he's probably going to use them as blackmail. Where did you say Keith was, anyway? Uh, I didn't say, and I have no idea, but look, just remember there's some place I have to be. I'll uh, call you later, huh? Darling. Mason. Yes. I'll confirm the amount by telex, but I want you to go ahead and uh, transfer one million Swiss francs to my personal account. No, I need a dumbbell in the business today. There'll be one more transfer of uh, one more million dollars in a day or so. You see that it's done. Your secretary told me to come right in. So, uh, CC. Talk. Tonight, NBC's got two great comedies that will blow you away. Alf and Valerie's Family, followed by two great specials, Unsolved Mysteries, then an NBC News special, Stress to Kill with Connie Chung.